Hey guys and girls, Adrian Mitchell here from Street Point Fabric Care, right of Inside Wire TV. Thanks for tuning in. Right then, so I've got these two rugs out here, both wool, oriental rugs. Uh, the warps on this one, aka fringes of wool, so it's a wool and wool. On this one, I think it was a cotton. No, it's a wool again. So what I've done on this rug is before submerging it and getting it wet, I have to do a little test to check for dye migration. So how I do that is what you need to do is a product that you're gonna use to clean the rug with. Me, I use Chemspec Oriental Rug Shampoo. Absolutely fantastic stuff. I love the way it foams up and it's self neutralizing as well if I remember correctly. No, biodegradable, sorry, it's already pH neutral. So what I've done is applied quite a lot of that product onto a terry towel then I put the terry towel onto the rug and put a weight on there and left it for a while so after about 20 minutes what we can do is we can see a little bit of red there so I was a little bit concerned I was going to get dye migration and if we go back out to the rug with dye migration what I don't want to do is get these reds leaking into these creamy little colors here because the customer is not going to be happy so first thing you need is watering can obviously you need to get the rug wet first which I've done on that one and I've already applied this product that I'm going to show you so all tech do a great product let me just grab it Ugh. this here this stuff comes in a powder absolutely stinks in my opinion it smells like the powdered version of that shift that's what it smells like in my opinion if anyone smelt that you know it smells absolutely disgusting so i've mixed it the dilution rates what it says on here with the powder with hot water applied it to the watering can and then this used the watering can to apply the product to the rug and saturated it out that's now been soaking in for probably about 20 minutes so what that should do is lock the dyes in to prevent this dye migration. And this is going to be a little bit difficult because I'm trying to do all this one-handed. And we've got building work going on over there at the unit today. They're building some more units. So what you need to do is what I do, tools you need, hose, carpet wand. I rigged up this piece of hose. Let's take this in the unit because it's a bit better light in there. So what I've done is rigged up this piece of hose with a hose lock connector and a double mail. You stick that in the vacuum part of your wand. So what's going to happen is water is now going to come out of the vacuum. So like I said, let's try and do this one-handed. So bear with me. So connect the hose on, and as you see, we've got water coming out of there. Then what I like to do is now I want to flush that product away, and this is also going to help give the rug a good rinse. Sun's out, rug's out, love it. Nice easy day for me today, cleaning the cut of these rugs. So what I like to do is go over like that, give it a good rinse, flip it over and do exactly the same on the back as well. You're probably all saying, what's this matting stuff? Everybody asks me about this matting. The reason I use that is because what it does, it keeps the rug off the floor, so you're not getting any contaminants. So this is water at the minute. A couple of you are probably thinking, wow, you submerged the rug outside. Where's the waste going? Well, lucky for me, when I took this unit on, I checked this, we have a sewer drain right there from his toilet inside his unit. So what happens is all my waste trickles away and goes down to all this sewer drain. Yes, that is a storm drain, but it's connected to the sewer drain. God knows when they've done this, but I checked that one out anyway. So that meets all that criteria. So saturate the rugs out. Then what you want to do is, I don't really like to use a rotary. I like to do it by hand with a brush. This is just a normal sweeping brush. Uh, they are stiff nylon bristle brush, uh, bristles, but they're slightly soft. So what you're doing is you're giving a little bit of delicate agitation to the rug. Because it's not on a rotary, you're spinning at 360 revolutions a minute or whatever yours does, you know, you can control 
how much you're going to agitate it so you're not going to you know damage the rug because those rugs i do need to do some repairs on we've got some edges here I need to do a little repair there so doing it delicately prevents damaging the rug also i've got a silk one from the same customer that i need to do repairs like this on so this one i'm going to probably submerge as well because i just feel it needs a good clean this cheap tacky thing polyester shag pole hot water extract it with teflon tool that's what i'm going to do to that one so once you've got the rug wet what you want to do is apply your oriental rug shampoo brush it in with your brush good bit of agitation and then you're going to go back to your wand and what you're going to do with your wand is once you've agitated it is you're going to give it a good rinse foamy so if we look at the foam a good indication of dye migration would be that there'd be pink or like a red color in the dye so because i locked the dye in it's not releasing from the test that i'd done i start to rinse the rug out i don't know how good pitch quality is on this and the reason i wanted to do a second video is because i wanted you to see that there's no color coming out from the test that i've done i don't know if you guys and girls can see that because i can't see anything so i can't see any dye migration or any loss of dye sometimes you can get excess dye where they didn't get it all out when they made the rug so i'm starting to rinse that out now like this easy job this rug cleaning easy easy peasy oh bit of pink there but is that soiling as well because obviously you can get foreign uh, soil from different countries with just different colors like me i'm based in stride but at the road in hereford which is about 45 minutes away the soil goes a bit red so obviously the same thing is going to happen in a foreign country when they release it with excess dye so once i've done that what i like to use is i don't use my trap mount for extracting because i want to save hours on the clock because otherwise you're paying for another service so what i do is use water claw that's designed for flood damage this one has got the good size holes on the bottom and it's 18 inches if i remember correctly hello mr commando how's it going mate and then what i do is obviously connect that to my hose once i've rinsed it through on both sides then i use my water claw to extract all the excess water right then i actually hook the vacuum hose up to the wand and go over the front and back with that once i've done that then i pin it on the rug hanger i get my air mover out and i like to place my air mover underneath the rug so it's blowing up here like this so you're actually drawing it from the back that doesn't take too long it'd be slightly damp before i leave today and i'll just leave it overnight and it'd be fine if it's quite wet you know you're going to need to get some heat temperature controlled room or something so i'm going to jump out the van and let's go in and have a look and see what's going on so this is a new little van that i bought for the fleet to match for this one I was meant to get a sign written this week but it's going in next week now so i'm going to walk in unit bear with me because it's a bit loud in there i'm just going to turn the air mover off it's the road <laughs> so what i've got is moisture probe as it says on the back beep is moderate slow is damp fast is soaked and what i've done as well is got a piece of uh, tissue so we can do a damp test on that one so i've fully submerged these uh rugs i extracted them with my water claw and then i like to use my old good old grace that i've had for about a million years now it's about 10 years um don't really use it for carpet cleaning but the vacuums on it are really good and it saves using the truck mount so it saves the hours on that so let's have a little look at the rugs so uh, remember i said about dye migration let's have a little scour over the rugs so that white looks nice and white doesn't look like we've got any dye migration i wouldn't really expect it on this rug it's more the second rug that i was concerned with but well, applied it anyway because obviously we've got the red here so i was a bit concerned 
Let's check out that. So I just want you to know as well, I've only had the air mover going on that rug. I haven't really had it on that one. It's only the last 15 minutes or so ago that I actually put it in the center. So let's have a little look at this rug for any dye migration. Right, Aaron, mate, how's it going? Thanks for checking back in. So I can't see any dye migration. There is one little bit on it, which I'll show in a sec. So it all looks in pretty good tact. I did notice after cleaning as well, the fiber wear. Can everybody see the fiber wear? And also, I noticed this rug's got tie-offs. Here we go. Good little tip, guys and girls, is point these tie-offs out to a customer because I front face cleaned, which is hot water extraction, a uh, Chinese rug which doesn't really have a high value. When I dropped it, it was that it was that dirty that when I dropped it back, you could see these tie-offs, and that's basically when they've woven the rug, they've missed a tuft, so they've gone back and knotted it. She said to me, "What's all these white bits?" And I explained what it was, um, and she wasn't having any of it. So I've learned every time I do a pre-inspection on a rug to pick it up to take it away, I look for those tie-offs and explain it to a customer. So the one area I noticed a bit of dye migration was along one of these, here we go. That one there, serves so slightly pink. And I was right, it's a cotton fringe, not a wool one, so I got that wrong earlier on, on that one video. So the fringes look nice and white. I haven't done any additional work on that. This is part of the submersion process. Um, I'm touching the rug now with my gloves. As you can see, there's no moisture. So I'm gonna put my hand on this. It's a little bit hard with it on a hanger. Let's just do a bit of rubbing so you can see there's no moisture on my hand at all. So what I'm gonna do now is grab the piece of paper. So grab the piece of paper. Ah, oh, see how I can hold this. What I'm gonna do is put the piece of paper against the rug, apply a little bit of pressure, and let's see how wet it is. So wow, yeah, there's nothing on there. And all I've had is one air mover go in and use the water claw. And like, as we all know, a water claw is designed to um, take water from a subfloor through the carpet pattern and out the carpet to help dry that. So that's why I use it. Hey, John F. Yes, how's it going, mate? Me and you probably have a little chat again later, I expect. So here's the moisture probe. What I like about these, like I said, you can get these from Restimate. You've got a little area to stick your sticker on. I don't know if you can see that. Sheen, pick telephone number on there. So you're in front of the customer using this. Just a bit of brand awareness. Right then, so let's put the moisture probe on, let's see what it says. Oh, what's that? No beeping, and I'm pushing against that. There we go, we've got a little beep when I push right in. Ah, uh, look at that. And they're saying that area is wet there, which is something I expect on a rug, you know, it's not gonna be fully dry straight away. So, question is, do you really need a centrifuge? Yeah, if you're cleaning rugs on high volume, you're gonna need a centrifuge. I clean a lot of rugs, but I don't do a massive amount, you know, to spend the money on a centrifuge. How's it going, Dave, mate? Thanks for tuning back in again. Yeah, yeah, cheers, John. Then what I'm gonna do is go to this rug, and this one, like I said, I've only had the air mover going in the center for the last 15 minutes, just to see how wet this one is. I do expect this to be wet as well, by the way. So yeah. It's saying it's quite wet. That's beeping considerably more. Yeah, and then what I'm gonna do is do the glove test on that one. So let's apply some pressure. Nothing on the glove. Let's do a wet paper towel test. So I think we all know, guys and girls, that wool holds 30% of its own body weight and moisture. So this rug isn't gonna be bone dry. Let's push a bit of pressure on that as well, so you guys know I ain't cheating. See? It's just damp. The moisture probe is saying it's a little bit wetter on that rug, but in my opinion, that's fine. So I'm going to be going home in the next sort of like 20 minutes, so what I'm going to do is run the air mover. I'm going to run the air mover for probably about another 20 minutes just to dry it off. Um, I've actually got a job to do tomorrow morning and what I'm going to do is come here to pick the van up and when I come I'm going to do another live video and put the moisture probe on so you can see how wet these rugs are. So I'll be leaving these rugs overnight hanging like this. I'm going to turn the camera back around because there's something else I want to tell you. Where's the button? 
hard to do with the gloves on. There we go. So what I wanted to say is when you're hanging a rug, you should not leave them to hang dead straight like that. You should always pet a kink sideways, whichever way you decide. It's to prevent putting a kink in the rug. I don't know if you've ever seen a rug when it lays on the floor and it's kinked left to right. That's probably because it's been washed, not hung correctly. Um, 26 degrees is the perfect temperature to dry a rug in. Obviously, the weather's not been the best at the moment, so I don't get 26 degrees in this unit. But in the summertime, I tell you what, I get a way more heat than that in here. And that rug would have been dry now if it's the summertime. So I don't actually take rugs on through the months of December and January because the temperatures are wrong in this unit. And those rugs will probably stay wet for longer than 72 hours. If it does, in my opinion, that's when mold and bacteria starts to grow in the rug. So when I come here tomorrow, I want to check that rug. I expect it to be ever so slightly damp is what I'm looking for. Um, and I've noticed after 72 hours as well is when you start to get a little bit of browning on the fringes. So I'll turn the camera back round. Obviously that's a wall uh, warp and this is a cotton. I noticed on the cottons what can happen sometimes is you get a slight bit of cellulosic browning on the tips. Because it's hung at an angle, I've noticed the moisture comes down and then goes down to there. So what I'll actually do before I go home tonight is I'll actually alternate the way this rug's hanging. So I'll alternate it so it's hanging like that way, if it makes sense. Something else for these rugs to look out for as well is not all of them do it. I don't know all the names and ins and outs. I know how to clean rugs. I don't really know what they are and what they're called. Obviously, I know what the fibers are, but I couldn't exactly tell you 100% of what the origin is because I'm not an expert in that. Um, so yeah, what I was going to say was, is the rugs do curl on the corners. But don't worry about that until it dries. Once it's dry, what I usually do is put it on the floor, leave that there, you know, throughout the day when the van's out and I'm doing jobs, come back and it's nice and straight. So it's something I really wouldn't worry about. So who's this scrubber dub? Let's turn the camera back round. So scrub a derby, you're saying, where do you get the floor tiles? What floor tiles are going on about, mate? Ah, sorry, floor tiles, duh, it's Friday. Looking too forward to having a beer. So you mean floor tiles, you mean these ones uh, here on the floor. Do you know what, everybody asks me where I get these tiles from. I've got a shed load of them hidden underneath here, and that's what I use for submerging on rugs. So those floor tiles, I actually picked up the whole, hey Carl, how's it going? Nice little conversation just a minute ago. And I hope you get that job, mate, because that is a good cushy little number. So yeah, going back to the floor tiles, they're actually tiles that are used for Formula One. And what Formula One do is when they do the racing or whatever it is across the whole of the world, in the uh, workshop, they set these up on the floor. So when oil leaks, they're not actually lying in it. So I was quite lucky to pick these up from a company that went bust and I paid 60 quid. 60 smackaroonas for all of them and all of them underneath there. Cheap as chips, it's done me well. I was also doing a bit of research on the internet. You can get some, um, it's like a gardening thing for plants and stuff. You put the mud over the top. You could use them to put your rugs on. And what I also do as well is, and I'll turn the camera around. When I'm giving a pre-vacuum, I lay these out on the floor, like so, like this, and I put the rug on top, and I give the rug a good vacuum, the front and back, and all the dust and the particles fall underneath that, and they land on the floor. And then what the vacuum's doing, because you've got a beta bar that's spinning around, it's replicating a rug badger, but something else I figured out that works quite well, and I have mentioned this before on this group, many, many, many moons ago, is use your CRB, soft brushes. Notice how clean I keep my CRB. I get all that gunk out. I don't leave that in there for the next job to cross contaminate someone else's carpet. But anyway, going back to the point is this is a soft brush. And what I do is I, I lay the rug face down on that after vacuuming and I go over it with the CRB. And that does exactly the same thing near as 
as a rug badger. A lot more cost effective for you guys and girls who want to set up in the rug game. Let's show you these uh, rugs. So this is the two rugs. So let's just do a recap. Vasim, mate, how's it going? Yes, John, mate. Nice to see you, baby. So this is the two rugs that I done yesterday. So remember we was checking for dog migration. So from looking at the rug, I can't see any dye migration. Rug does feel a little bit damp on this corner. Fringes don't look too bad. This was the area yesterday that I said I noticed a dye migration on these. That might have already been there before. Um, I don't remember it from inspection. So it feels ever, ever, ever so slightly damp with the coldness. And then I remember this rug, I didn't really put the air mover on. So I'm just gonna show you something and check something in a sec because Yesterday was a nice sunny day and I had the air mover on it and then we've had night time with different temperatures. So I'm going to go to this van and show you what the temperature is. So on there it's saying 7 degrees. So those two rugs have been left um, from 7 degrees. This morning I expect it went colder last night. So let's go back to the moisture probe. So remember, I didn't really put the air mover on that one, but I did this one. Let's check this one, see what this one says. And I'm pushing against that. Let's go higher. I'm pushing against that. Oh, there's a little beep there. Pushing against that. Pushing against that. And then what I expect is when I get down towards the bottom, I expect it to beep a little bit, because remember I said about hanging the rug at an angle, the moisture's gonna go one way. So let's just see. Yeah, so it's saying there's a bit of moisture in there. So we haven't even hit 24 hours yet from the cleaning process. So this is what I was saying. As long as you don't let more than 24 hours go by, it should be fine. CBT is good for fringes. Yes, it is, Vasim, mate. It's great for fringes. What else are people saying? What do you use on fringes? Ah, I've done that in the cleaning process, buddy. But So Vasim, what's going to happen, mate? If these fringes did go sell loose it brown, I'm telling you guys a dirty little secret now. Magic solution. I'll give you a hint with this stuff. You use it in your clean tank when you rinse a carpet. Spray it on the fringe. Soak it. Let it soak in. Set your machine up, your portable or your trap mount. Get some really good heat on it extract the fringe off and you'll pull the saddle loose it browning out if it's ever so slightly on the tip what you could do the camera won't focus in nip the tip off with a pair of napping shears you know like i taught some of you lot on the carpet repairs so we've tested that rug just get me moisture probe just wipe it because obviously i've got moisture on there it's going to wipe it on my trousers let's check this one so let's see this one i do expect this one to be damp mind so that one's saying that there's damp in there. But I can't see any dye migration. I can't see the fringes are gone brown or anything else like that. So the point being of what I'm trying to say here is if you're gonna submerge a rug my way, let's turn the camera back around. If you're gonna submerge the rug like I showed in the three videos yesterday, just remember you probably could do with a couple of more air movers you know, one on each rug to get it as dry as this if you're worried about drying. Personally, myself, I've been doing this method for about six years now, probably longer than that. I know by the end of today that rug's going to be dry, so it's going to be absolutely fine. Um, really appreciate everybody tuning in. Still feeling a bit tired. My eyes look like pee holes in the snow. Or was that the corona last night? Hmm. <laughs> anyway, right, van's loaded up. I need to get on a job, got some upholstery to clean, let's go earn some dollars um, and have a rest because it's Sunday, may do some marketing or something, I don't know what you guys do on the weekend and then hit it back on Monday. So Monday when I come in, these rugs would still be hanging there, so even though I'm happy with how dry this one is and how dry this one is, I would still leave that hanging for another 24 hours just to make sure no moisture is in there. What you could do, so if today I was working in the unit, what I would do is set my air mover up and have it blow in under the rugs just to make sure but I'm going out on the road and I don't really like to leave air movers going when I'm not in the unit because if it caught fire all of this 
would go up in flames. Bye bye livelihood, bye bye money, poor me begging on the street is what it would be. Or asking you lot for uh, donations. Hey, if you wanna make a donation, that's fine. I'll give you my bank details. <laughs> anyway, right, I'm gonna crack on with some work. Have a great weekend, folks. Probably see you all knocking about on Ian Wicks's group. Big up to Ian Wicks, because if it wasn't for him setting this group up, you know, a lot of us wouldn't be able to communicate. Also, I'd like to give a big shout out to Paxis, because you're a good rug master cleaner you are. And if I ever got to go to your country, I'll tell you what, you can see something a bit different. The production ways that that guy cleans rugs. You know, he's like a Coca-Cola bottle factory. And they're making bottles every second. He's cleaning rugs like that, and he's getting them dry that quick. So he must be minted. When I go visit him, he best take me to his pad, is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, big up Ian, big up Paxis. Um, obviously, big shout out to Restimate for some of the tools. Big shout out to Andrew Briscoe for some other bits and pieces. And big shout out to Texafirm just because I love you guys. Take it easy, people. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you knocking about.